Hi, I'm Dan Cable, and this is Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. Let me show you this meme. This meme cracks me up because it's so transparently easy to rebuild in this situation. Now, I don't share this meme to make fun of those who actually do have to rebuild after a catastrophe strikes. But it strikes me as really funny that uh, humans can take a lot of pride in the things we do. Um, and some of the things we do are incredible. We build cathedrals. We've sent a man to the moon using no more calculating power than what's found in a cell phone these days. And yet other things are impossible. We'll never be able to do it. And we're going to look at two of those things today in Romans chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Verse 3 has the first impossible thing. Not hard, impossible. It says, Concerning God's Son, who was born of a descendant of David according to the flesh. What does that mean? It means that Jesus was born as a descendant of David. Well, here's the thing. You don't get to choose your own mom and dad. You, 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 that's not on the table for, for options, you know? But more than that, if you're living in a monarchical society and it's a hereditary monarch, you don't get to choose to be born into the royal family, do you? You either are or you're not. And if you're not born into the royal family, there is no chance that you're going to be the king. No chance. Well, Jesus was born at the exact right time to fulfill prophecy and at the exact right um, and and the exact right family, which is the family of David. Now that's just on the fleshly side. That's just according to his body, who his parents were. But listen to this, verse 4. Who was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead, according to the Spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord. What this verse is saying is that Jesus rose from the dead. Now, we don't mean this in some kind of spiritual or inspirational sense. We mean this in the in the zombie kind of way you'd think, except without being like, Rrr. he is back. He's fully alive. He is himself. He totally died and he totally resurrected. Here's the crazier part. He wasn't rejuvenated. He wasn't almost dead. He was totally dead, dead, dead. And in some sense, it was a self-resurrection. That means he is so powerful that he rose from the dead. Now, the Bible is clear that God rose Jesus from the dead, and yet it also says Jesus rose from the dead. This is the Trinity in action, and we see the Trinity in this very verse. It's not the point of the verse, so I'm not going to spend a long time on it, but just, just listen to this. The Son of God with power by the resurrection of the dead according to the Spirit. So there you go. Son, God, Spirit. You've got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And anytime somebody can be literally crucified and come back from the dead, we would do well to listen to them. Now that's not all. It also says, Jesus Christ our Lord. It says three things about him. It says that his name was Jesus. That's just his name. But Christ means Messiah or anointed one. If you're like, I don't know what Messiah means. Anointed one. An anointed one is a royal term from ancient Israel where they would crown the person with oil. They would anoint the person with oil who was going to be the king. Jesus is the anointed king, the Savior, and the Lord. And it doesn't just say the Lord of Israel. He's the Lord of everything. So, to, to understand Jesus' resurrection is to leave you in a place where you can refuse it or you can let it change your life. 
I pray that today and the rest of this week, you'll let it keep changing your life. This is Devotions. Thanks for joining us today.